This is the new 32-inch 4K 240Hz Samsung Odyssey G81SF OLED, and it's the same, but also a little bit different than a lot of the other 32-inch OLED offerings out there at the moment. Yeah, I know this is a refresh of last year's model, but I didn't get hands-on with last year's model. But let's talk about the pricing from the jump. The Samsung Odyssey G81SF OLED will set you back around about 1100 US dollars or at the time of filming, about 1400 Aussie dollars. As far as the specs go, the G81 SF features a 31.5 inch 3840 by 2160 Samsung QD OLED panel with a refresh rate of 240 Hz and an HDR brightness of around about 400 nits as reported by Windows. What's really different about this Samsung QD OLED panel is as compared to other panels, it's got a matte screen surface as opposed to a semi-gloss anti-glur surface that we see on other OLED panels. Anti-glur? Why can't I say, I can't say anti-glur? Sounds like anti-clair. Anti oh, anti 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 oh, yeah, apparently. The G81SF has a response time of 0 0.03 milliseconds gray to gray. It's fully G-Sync and FreeSync compatible, and that's how I use it with G-Sync. There was no issues with this panel using G-Sync whatsoever. The G81SF has standard 100mm visa mounting on the rear, and if you're looking at mounting this monitor to any existing or compatible monitor mounting solution, or if you want to wall mount it, it should work just fine. The included stand is fully height, tilt, swivel, and believe it or not, rotation adjustable. It's a bit of a weird one to see on a 32 inch panel. As far as connectivity, it's got two HDMI 2.1 ports, a single display port 1.4 port with display stream compression. It's got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a five gigabit USB type B port for the uplink, as well as a USB type A port, which is also five gigs. The design of the G81SF stands out and makes it feel different from everything else on the market. I was instantly impressed by how good the matte screen surface is. I thought I wouldn't be really into it considering most other OLED displays don't have that, but the matte surface is, to be honest, a lot better than you'd expect. I really like the silver design too. It's kind of my vibe. I really like silver tech. And to me, it makes the G81SF feel like a much more premium panel. Whether or not that's true, it's just how it feels. The monitor stand also has this super thin base that if I'm being honest, why don't we see more of stuff like this? I hate those crazy big monitor stands that look like tripods and all this just insane design that we just don't need. I think it's a bit of a waste of space. Can we please get more monitor stands like this? I know Aorus is doing stuff like this now as we saw at Computex, but those other stands are just, they're just ugly and they're a waste of space. Another thing I wanted to mention about the G81SF is the panel itself is so thin, it's kind of unnerving because OLED panels typically are very thin in the panel itself, but all the components and the cooling and the driver boards in the back make quite a large bump, but this panel just doesn't have it. And I thought it was really weird when I was pulling out of the box and I was like, is, is this right? And yeah, obviously, you know, it is. It's Samsung, they make the technology, they build the panel however they like. Everyone else is kind of borrowing at this point. The G81SF has a little nub style joystick on the back right of the screen, kind of in the center, if that makes sense. The menu system is really easy to navigate and to be honest, all of the menus for all of these monitors feel exactly the same now, but that's a good thing. If you've used one monitor at this point, I think you've used them all. So yeah, definitely not a bad thing. Oh, and if you really care, it's got Windows dynamic lighting. I don't know why that matters. Alrighty, party people out there in the world of the internet, how's this thing for gaming? Well, it's pretty excellent for me. Larger monitors are always my go-to as opposed to smaller, higher refresh rate panels. That's not to say that smaller monitors with higher refresh rates are in any way worse. That's just my own personal opinion. And, you know, I'm allowed to have an opinion, but as for the experience with gaming as a whole, the G81SF feels responsive and really well balanced. And for gaming on it, like I said, it's nice. There isn't really that much more to say about it. We're at the point now where these OLED panels are just so good that Something has to be completely wrong with the monitor for it to stand out. And it's just so unusual for OLED monitors to have stuff like this. These panels are just typically good overall. As for console gaming, the G81SF will work with all of your consoles. Kind of want to circle back to something that I kind of mentioned. I know it's a bit off topic, but it's kind of on topic. Once you've experienced a good OLED panel, it has to be really, really bad for there to be an issue. And the G81SF 
isn't terrible. But back to the topic on hand, the out of the box calibration is really nice for a gaming monitor. And that's not just to say that this is purely for gaming because it's not, because you can use it for content creation. I didn't need to adjust too many of the settings here. The colors are excellent. The HDR experience is decent, which is typically how I use my monitors because I don't know, if it's got HDR and it's OLED, why wouldn't you use it? And just use it. Don't hate, don't hate, just appreciate guys. Too much hating on the internet, I don't like it. To be real though, it's the same experience that you're gonna find with most other QD OLED panels out there on the market, but the G81SF does have a few shortcomings and these could be deal breakers for you, but I don't think they're deal breakers. First of all, there's no USB Type-C port on this, which means there's no DisplayPort Alt, which means there's no PD charging, and most importantly for me, which is like the most important thing in the world, there's no KVM. What's up with that? Look, KVMs probably aren't super important for most people, but for me, they are. And at this price point, why wouldn't they just include a KVM? We're in a time where people have both laptops and desktops or like a gaming console on the desk and they want to use all of the same peripherals so why wouldn't they just include a KVM in this panel and the fact that the G81SF doesn't allow for this it's a bit of a letdown I'm not gonna lie it's it's so strange to me and the next thing is also DisplayPort 2.1 this one is a bit of a strange one because you know it depends how you feel about it but here's the truth about it the fact that this display doesn't have DisplayPort 2.1 makes zero difference to the functionality of this display. Sure, it should have it considering other panels which use this exact panel have it. However, considering DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC offers the same performance and also DisplayPort 1.4 also being able to handle 4K at 240Hz, why would it even need to have DisplayPort 2.1? All of the GPUs you'd want to drive this panel at its maximum refresh rate have display stream compression. Sure, you could argue that if it had DisplayPort 2.1, you wouldn't need it. However, on the flip side of all of that, only Radeon RX 7000 GPUs and above from AMD, as well as the GeForce 50 series cards have DisplayPort 2.1. I've had this discussion many times in the comment sections on other monitor videos. Right now, in 2025, with the GPUs available to drive this panel, DisplayPort 2.1 is not required. And while it might make a difference in the future, for what is available right now, DisplayPort 1.4 with display stream compression is fine. Don't let people who make rage bait content fool you into believing it's required right now. You need to think about this from two angles and I'm gonna kind of repeat myself a bit here on purpose just to really drill this in. The panel is capable of 4K 240Hz and the cards required to drive this panel all have DisplayPort 1.4 with display stream compression. Newer cards will also have DisplayPort 1.4 with display stream compression. GPU manufacturers are not going to depreciate a feature that is part of a display standard. Calm down, please. Please calm down. And that leads me into who the G81SF is for. Well, to be honest, it's for someone like me. Well, it's for someone like me, but that doesn't need a KVM. It's for someone who wants a monitor that does it all. It's a high refresh rate 4K display that you can use for productivity and gaming. The color accuracy is excellent. It's OLED, what more is there? Right? The main question is, do I think it's worth the price? Here's the thing. There's other panels from MSI, like the 322URX, and also other panels from ROG that have all of the missing features of the G81SF, but on the flip side, they cost more money. Right? And that's the reality of it. I would say that if you didn't care about DisplayPort 2.1 or a KVM, the G81SF is worth considering. If you really, really want DisplayPort 2.1 and a KVM, there's plenty of other options out there, but they're gonna cost you more money. It's a pretty simple equation. If you want more features, you pay more money, right? You get what you pay for. For me personally, I don't like that it doesn't have those things, but it's not a deal breaker because this panel is gorgeous. I love the silver design aesthetic. I know it's something dumb, but I do like that. I wasn't sure about the matte surface at first, but I love it. And overall, I think the G81SF is a decent panel. Here's the thing too. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to listen to anything I have to say. 
We always see the same comments with people saying that someone else said something else differently, but the reality is it's your money, who cares? If you don't wanna buy it, don't buy it. I can't tell you how to spend your money. I would suggest trying some of these panels in person if at all possible. My job is to share my experience with you guys and that's kind of what we do here on the channel. It's not just about numbers and specs, it's like how I feel about something when I use it and I can't force you to do anything. So buy it if you want, don't buy it, it makes no difference to me. I like this panel from Samsung and I'm sure other people will like it too and there's gonna be other people who don't like it. 